Who have just met? Captains. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, and uh, we are just going to give folks a moment or two to jump on. Um, but while we do, um, I will introduce myself and my lovely guest today. So um, I'm Tara Doherty, the Director of Communications at PADS. And with me is Michelle McKnight um, from VPD and um, her lovely accredited facility dog, Zen. Uh, there's a picture of him behind her on the wall there, but I understand he is also snoozing at her feet. Uh, so um, there we go. So he's working hard or hardly working from one or the other, but uh, thanks for joining us, Zen. And uh, Michelle, while we let folks get online here, um, tell us, it's not your first time on Tune In Tuesday. The last time we caught up with you was before you were matched with Zen and you were still in that weird waiting game. And so a lot has changed. And so tell us a little bit about that. What has changed? Wow. Yeah. I. I don't, I can't remember the exact date that we did speak, but you're right, it was before we were matched, uh, Zen and I were matched, uh, or Zen was matched to our department. Um, and uh, it, when it happened, it, it certainly happened fast. Um, he was, he and I trained, I think, a good chunk of um, June and into July. And then in July, middle of July, it was, hey, uh, he's ready to go home with you. And I have to say, I was, uh, very excited, but also very nervous. I've, as I've listened to some of the other uh, Tune In Tuesday um, guests and them talking about, oh, I don't want to mess up. And I can assure you, uh, I was also feeling the same way. So I think it's a common theme for us handlers that we are gifted and um, these amazing dogs and we know the power of their um, abilities to connect with people and uh, we just don't want to mess up. So a huge learning skill, uh, sorry, huge learning curve for me to uh, work with Zen and um, handle uh, the the command structure in a way that he's going to uh, follow. And here we are almost uh, two years, about two and a half years, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, is it? No, he can't. It's almost two years. Yeah. Almost two years later, we're still, we're still loving it. Amazing. Okay. So for those of you that have just joined us, um, I see our numbers climbing as they do in the first few minutes that we go live. So if you've just jumped on, we're here with Michelle McKnight from VPD and PADS accredited facility dog Zen. Um, if you would like to ask questions, um, you have two ways to do that, depending on where you're joining from. So if you're watching on Zoom, um, click that Q&A button um, in the bottom of your Zoom window. It looks like two little talking bubbles. You see them above my head on the left there. Um, or um, you can also um, type into the chat. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, just type your comments right into the question, uh, the comment section on Facebook Live. Um, and I see a few comments there uh, from Carol Ann and Lees. Um, if you wanna tell us where you're watching from, uh, it gives our post a little bit of a boost so more people see it, uh, but it also helps us to know uh, where these broadcasts reach out to. And even more importantly, if you have a special connection to Zoom, or, sorry, to Zoom, to Zen, um, feel free to comment on that in the comments as well on Facebook Live, um, because we really love uh, to know who is watching and if they were part of Zen's journey to where he is now. So with that, um, Michelle, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and ask you, for those that didn't watch our first interview, how is it that you came to be part of the PADS community um, and matched with Zen? What did that journey look like for you? Um, well, it, it started with uh, my role on our critical incident stress management team um, as a volunteer member of the Vancouver Police Critical Incident Stress Management Team. Um, we would go to these diffusings for police officers who had been involved in critical events. So really um, graphic uh, events that occur that they have to respond and do their job. Um, and then our response was to help mitigate the mental health um, impacts of always responding to nasty calls. And one day, um, Sue Baker, who is the handler for Luca, uh, Luca is our victim service dog. He's a justice facility dog. One day Sue said, hey, look, uh, can, can Luca and I come sit in with you? And uh, I said, absolutely. So Luca sat in and it just changed the atmosphere of the diffusing, which is normally sort of tense and awkward and um, a little bit um, 
the people are a little bit anxious. They don't know what to expect. They mostly really don't want to be there. Um, they've just been through a very critical event. Their body's still processing the, the, the event and they, they might still have work like physical uh, report writing to do. But when Luca came in, the smiles that came on people's faces, like the atmosphere changed in a, in a, uh, the heartbeat of a dog. And it was right then that people were like, you guys should get a dog for your SISM team. And that kind of planted the seed. Um, I started working full time in our employee wellness unit in uh, July of 2019. And uh, that's when we got to use uh, the dog. We got to use Luca in our diffusings. And he, he ended up coming in probably five times over the two years before um, I, I made the application to PADS. And uh, it really just um, that having Luca in our diffusings really just reinforced the value of um, the dogs and how they can connect with people and break down barriers and allow people to really um, open up. And uh, so once uh, we realized that, yep, we want to make this application, it was, you know, a report to our executive to get permission. They are very forward thinking, recognizing this was a great opportunity. Uh, we then got some funding from the Vancouver Police Foundation to pay for the health and wellness of, uh, of Zen. And then of course, uh, outreach to PADS to, uh, to say, hey, look, uh, the Vancouver Police needs another uh, wellness, uh, needs another accredited facility dog to work in our wellness unit. And, uh, and that's how the whole thing started. That was uh, almost, uh, as I said, almost two years ago. And uh, it's been nothing but upwards ever since. Really busy, but really important work. And um, Zen has made a huge difference to our members and, uh, and our employees. And I know this because uh, someone popped in the office uh, earlier this morning and we were just having a chit chat. Uh, two employees and then three women who are walking by the hallway just like oh Zen and they they opened the, the walk through the doorway and got on the floor gave them a little cuddle said hi and then they're like we're off to training and off they walked so that's the beauty of having Zen in our office people see him they come in they say hello uh, they connect and uh, it's just a it's a really great opportunity plus we go out and we do SISM diffusings at different locations. Uh, we visit sick and injured members in the hospital. Uh, we do some uh, training sessions uh, for police environments and um, family days, that sort of thing. So yeah, we're, we're, he's a very popular dog. Let's just say that. Well, that is no surprise whatsoever because he's also an incredibly sweet dog. Um, and so that um, he is obviously very, very uh, good at what he does and well suited for it. And um, we've had a bunch of questions come in as we've been talking here. And so I'm just going to kind of jump in and, and ask a couple of those, if that's okay with you. Um, so one is just a question from Sarah saying, do the members book time with you and Zen, or is it more ad hoc and formal? What does that look like uh, for the members? Yeah, it's, um, it, there is no time sessions book. Sometimes um, there are the odd occasions where an employee will say, hey, I'm going to be popping by tomorrow. When's a good time, morning or afternoon? And we'll kind of make those arrangements so that we're here when they are. But um, I'm off, off, often at a different um, building. So we are going out into our community or our VPD community to connect with um, other uh, employees uh, in their environment so that because uh, some some people um, certainly in the civilian world aren't as mobile in their jobs as we as police officers are so we'll go to one of the the buildings to uh, walk around and literally just share dog love and you know it's it's amazing people are uh, just like wow it is so nice to see Zen it really made my day they're smiling and and uh, it's like a little bit of a change to their normal routine. So um, so there's the odd occasion where we have appointments that people come in, but most of the time it's a, a drop by or um, a request to come to a certain unit or a certain bu building for a visit. And uh, and then we'll do that. And also, I just wanted to be a, a send a little shout out to Alana and Dave, who are were Zen's uh, puppy raisers. Um, we've uh, stayed connected, and uh, they get to see Zen every now and then when they come into the Lower Mainland. We we make sure that we connect. So big hi to Dave and Alana. Yeah, and I just noticed uh, their comments uh, on Facebook Live here. So they are watching, um, and and I think that's a really important part for people to understand is that. Um, you have this dog in part uh, because these extraordinary volunteers uh, took him on as a wee little puppy and um, 
loved on him and trained him and exposed him to all sorts of things and uh, worked with him um, for the first a couple of years of his life before he came to advanced training at PADS. And um, we could not do what we do uh, without our volunteers. Um, and Dave and Elena are extraordinary. Uh, I have lost count of how many dogs they have raised for us. Um, and they now have um, a new uh, recruit who is not so little. I was going to say little recruit, but he's not so little anymore. Um, and so we are so, so grateful for our volunteers. And um, I'm just going to also just throw a plug in here that we are actively recruiting new puppy raisers right now. Uh, we have puppies coming down the pike and um, are looking for volunteers that will take on that first bit of life. So if that's of interest to our viewers, um, you can find out more at pads.ca slash volunteer. But with that, um, for those of you that are just joining in, um, every time I look at the, the number count, there's more people uh, that are watching today. So if you um, have just joined us, we're here with Michelle McKnight and Zen from VPD. Um, and um, if you have any questions for us, we would love to answer them on air for you. So you can throw them into the Q&A if you're watching on Zoom, or you can throw them into the comment section um, on Facebook Live if you're watching on Facebook Live. Um, with that, I understand that Zen is not, uh, you've mentioned Luca, um, but there are other dogs at VPD, um, other PADS dogs and other dogs in general. Tell us a little bit about the working dogs at VPD in general and the kinds of roles that they take on. Absolutely. We have uh, the canine dogs. They are um, uh, used in apprehension um, and um, police um, work out on the field. Uh, and I think we have 16 dogs in that unit. So it's a very large unit and those handlers are specifically trained with those dogs for a long time. Um, we don't have a lot of crossover due to the nature of the differences in the jobs they do, but there are a few of those um, canine dogs that uh, are um, uh, quite uh, friendly and, and um, uh, in a way that the uh, Zen and Sadie and Luca, and I'll talk about Sadie in a minute, can all interact. So uh, one of them is uh, um, Vancouver Police Service dog, uh, uh, Jade, and uh, her handler is uh, Constable Jesse Schellenberg. And so uh, Jade is often at some um, common um, fundraising events or common VPD events, and the two dogs will actually say hello and, and not be... Uh, scary to each other so that's kind of unique and then we have three full-time accredited facility dogs Luca um, works in our victim service unit with the handler Sue Baker he's the dog father of the Vancouver police uh, Lou, Sue and Luca started working in uh, I think 2016 and um, they work with victims of crime so their focus is on um, clients outside of the VPD agency um, and Luca is trained as a justice facility dog so he a very specialized training to be able to allow him to go into court and sit on the witness stand at the feet of um, a witness or a victim who's testifying in court to provide comfort while they testify. So he's got a very unique job and very um, unique and highly qualified skills to do that. I would say there are many dogs, including Zen, who would not be able to do that. So PADS does a great job of recognizing the, the dog's abilities and skills and personalities and then matching them to the appropriate job and the appropriate um, discipline. So Luca is working in that field and has been for, I think, seven years. And then Sadie is an accredited facility dog and she works in our internet child exploitation unit. And she's there to support the officers who do some of those nasty, ugly uh, investigations in, involving um, children and uh, women at risk in the sex trade or, or uh, children who are victims of sexual assaults and sex crimes. So it's not a very, um, what I would say, a very enlightening, uh, like a, a very uplifting uh, unit in terms of the type of investigation, but the quality obviously and the um, outcome of the job is very righteous. And I know those officers work very hard, but it can be very uh, overwhelming at times. So Sadie is in the room with them to support them as they do some of that, uh, what I call nasty work uh, on uh, through the, the their job. And, uh, and so she's been working with them for the same time that uh, Zen has been working with me about uh, about a year and a half, almost two years. And, um, and so, yeah, VPD is very lucky to have uh, three full-time accredited facility dogs. And I think there's been an application for a fourth, 
fourth uh, accredited facility dog to work in our major crime unit. And um, that's sort of in, in the works right now. I'm not sure where that is uh, in terms of um, the application process, but uh, there may be a fourth at some point in the future. Um, and, you know, I think people really understand and recognize the value, the therapeutic value of, you know, petting a dog, the calming nature that the dog has when um, it is it itself is calm. And so many people say that like, oh my gosh, Zen is so calm. And I'm like, well, that's a that's the investment of a $35,000, $40,000 dog that Pads has trained and donated to us. This is the quality of dog we get that you can interact with this dog in, an, in a work environment. And there's and, and there's not going to be any threat of him running around or, you know, nipping at people or, or scaring people or being out of control. And, um, and that's the, the quality and the value of having a PADS dog. So I think uh, our members have really appreciated that and uh, have embraced it. And I think our executive has too. So we're really lucky to be working in such a progressive uh, nature. And, and the neat thing too is, you know, we have a close relationship, the Vancouver Police with PADS because we have the three the three accredited facility dogs. So we continue to train with PADS trainers and stay connected to some of the, the um, internal employees. And uh, there's, I've had a number of um, police agencies contact me uh, just saying, hey, we're interested in getting a, uh, a dog, a wellness dog for our unit. What does it look like for you? And what can you help us understand so we can um, perhaps get one for our unit? So I find that really encouraging as well uh, because other agencies are recognizing the value of um, a therapeutic uh, dog in, in the workplace. Yeah, I think, I mean, the benefits are so far reaching and I think actually, I could be wrong, but I think uh, VPD is now, you know, the agency with the most PADS dogs in it right now. And actually a fun announcement, uh, we just made it a few days ago is that your fourth dog has just arrived. Um, so Sydney was matched uh, with Sue, uh, who has Luca um, in preparation. I, I know uh, Luca has retirement plans on the horizon. He's been there a long time. So um, yeah, the announcement went out last week. So I know I'm not speaking out of turn uh, that uh, Sydney is um, on the job now. So that's really, really exciting to see the program growing and changing and, 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 continuing as well with successor dogs um, as, you know, the dogs that kind of uh, laid that groundwork, um, moving on to the next stages of their, of their journey. So with that, um, we do have a few questions that have popped up. Uh, one is, what are some of the activities that Zen enjoys on his off days? He loves the snow. If it was a snow day every day, that dog would be in heaven. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of hikes, uh, certainly um, recently in the nice weather, we've been hiking uh, in on the mountains on the North Shore uh, in the snow, and he really enjoys that. He loves playing tug. That's his absolute number one uh, game. Um, and so he will he will play tug with anyone including dogs and people any chance he gets and uh the only reason um i have a fighting chance here in the office of uh, or anyone in the office with playing with them is that he doesn't have a good grip on the carpet whereas if he when he's out on the grass <laughs> he almost pulls me over so he he's very strong at throwing his uh, 75 body around me very useful at that so he loved to, uh, those two activities and also a nest accredited facility dog that works in treehouse which is a specialty unit that hybrid unit that involves vpd members and i think it's um uh vancouver greater uh greater vancouver family services um support workers and they have um they have a, an office where um, interviews can be conducted and, and Nessa, who is handled by ISIS, uh, they both of them work out of that office. So Nessa, uh, Luca, sorry, Nessa, um, Sydney and Zen were at the VPD two weeks ago for a little training session with um, Pat's trainer, Margaret. And uh, I have to tell you, um, you know, as a handler, it's always a little nervous, like, oh goodness, is Zen gonna still refuse Food like he's supposed to and for all you handlers out there I'm sure you know how I feel but anyways the dogs the dogs did great and we got to new, learn some new skills from Val uh, sorry from uh, Margaret which was very um, I found really uh, rejuvenating and just another reminder that you know the work I do with Zen supporting our, our employees is one thing but the work and the connection that I have to have with Zen 
to be able to do that job is really important too. So I have to make sure that I am intentionally, um, you know, stimulating his brain and his interests and um, his um, desire to continue to want to work so that uh, we're both in a healthy place. And uh, some days are, I know I lack in that area. So it's always a bit of a like, oh goodness, I got bogged on today because I had all this administrative stuff to do. But it's always, I'm, I'm always conscious that um, that relationship with the dog is really important and, and the bonding is important and it's it's an ongoing process um, to make sure that it remains healthy. I think that's such an important piece of the puzzle and I think that you know it's something I'll speak to is just that it's an ongoing partnership as well of ensuring ensuring that health and wellness and and also just like you when you go home for the day that you get that downtime and you find things that kind of fill your cup and I love uh that Zen loves to play tug I have one of those too um she is too strong for me. Um, so her favorite game is hauling me around in like a rolling office chair or my wheelchair, um, because then she can tug as hard as she wants and not pull my arms out of the sockets. So, um, yeah, too funny. Well, I love how they all have their favorite games. And I also love the connection that starts to build and develop between not just, uh, the dogs, but the handlers as well. And, and, and how awesome for you that you have fellow handlers within VPD um, that um, you know you can learn from and they can learn from you, et cetera. Um, we have a couple of, oh my gosh, the comments are just like flying in here and we are getting close to time. So if anybody has any final burning questions, uh, pop them into our Q and A box or um, in the comment section on Facebook. Um, one of the questions is how is having Zen changed how you personally feel at work how has he impacted um you like not the rest of the team but you personally yeah that's a really good question I feel um you know everything happens for a reason in life all the good things and all the bad things um happen for a reason in life and um certainly this when this opportunity arose when when someone said that one day you guys should get a dog my initial reaction was uh I can't have a dog. I got way too much stuff going on. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized this, what a great opportunity. And so, you know, in terms of changing or, or the way it affects me or the way I, I feel about the dog and, and my benefits, um, he gets me off the couch every day to go for a walk. And the, that is far and by, uh, beyond the best thing ever. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that because I, I am a better person because of that little amount of exercise and whatever the weather. Um, but also I feel like, um, uh, you know, I've got some grown, grown children, so they're out of the house. Uh, this just adds a nice, um, compliment to my life and the work that I do. I'm very passionate about, um, the mental health of our employees, all of our employees and helping people navigate that. And so he is for me, a constant reminder that I have to, I have to be healthy myself in order to do my job. And so he is a really constant reminder of like, you know, bringing his toys in is, and I'll just take the camera here. So he's been laying at my feet during our whole discussion. But if you look a little closer there, there's a toy and, um, over there, uh, there is his, I'm just trying to see if I can get it. There's a toy bin over there. Uh, and so what he will do is he'll grab a toy and he'll come and bring it to my feet. And that's a reminder. Hey, you've been, a, you've been sitting down too long. So, um, he really has encouraged me to be like a healthier person overall. And, um, and that's, that's a good thing. And, and also the PADS community, I've got to know some, some other handlers and dogs through the PADS community who are local, who have helped me out uh, when, when they've been PADS sitters, PADS dog sitters through the, the PADS network. Uh, they, I've been connected with them. So that's really neat too. And um, knowing that there's a whole bunch of dogs and sometimes you know as I'm sure happens to other handlers people stop you like hey I was a puppy raiser or hey my best friend has that Pat's dog and and again there's that connection so in so many unique ways these dogs really reinforce and um, encourage connection and great and great conversations. Yeah I said uh, years ago I don't know how to start conversations anymore because I've had a Pat's dog for like 16 ish years at my side in one capacity or another. And yeah, when I meet people in public, I never have to start conversations because they're just that instant icebreaker too. So um, they are definitely little uh, community 
I, um, forgers. They're like the glue that kind of connects everybody. So I love that about them. Um, we are kind of wrapping up to time. We did have one question from somebody about if they're wanting to get a service dog, how they would go about doing that. And, and um, you can go to our website to pads.ca slash apply. And there's information there about our various program areas, um, mobility service dogs um, are for folks with physical disabilities. We also have hearing dogs um, for those that are deaf, hard of hearing, uh, PTSD program um, for uh, first responders and veterans um, with PTSD. And then of course, our lovely accredited facility dogs. So they're all on that same page. So you just pick the area that um, is of interest to you and then it will walk you through the process a little bit. Um, and so you can register your interest there and uh, then you kind of go on to our list um, and we send out applications periodically to the folks that are on, the, on that list as we have room on our wait list. Um, and so with that, um, Michelle, I just wanna thank you again so much for spending time with us today. It's always nice to catch up and see where our dogs have wound up and also just the impact that they're having. And it sounds like Zen has been a perfect fit, not just uh, for VPD, but for you personally as well. And that's really, it's nice for me because I got to see the, the before of like, I'm waiting and I'm anxious and I don't know what's coming and when. And um, thank you so much. Um, it made my day to kind of get this update and I'm sure uh, the rest of our audience has enjoyed as well. So thank you so much for joining in and um, we'll catch up again at some point, but uh, give Zen a script for us. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. You're absolutely welcome. And it's funny, just one last thing about the matching. His personality is he loves groups of people and so do I. So that little match is really cool. We get to be in groups of people and we're both in our happy place. So it's a neat, it's a neat uh, opportunity. You gotta love the extrovert people and the extrovert dogs uh, joining <laughs> forces. So I'm like, it's just like a giant party all the time, which is amazing. <laughs> so um, as we wrap up here, um, we will be back in two weeks um, with our next uh, episode where we are catching up with uh, the adventures of Sawyer and um, our PAD staff member, breeding manager, uh, Jack Clark, um, and puppy and training Sawyer that came to us from Australia. Um, so uh, we'll do a little check in with them and see what, what Sawyer is up to. Um, so that is two weeks from today. Um, and if you have anyone that you would like us to interview and have on our Tune In Tuesdays, feel free to send us an email at communications with an S at pads.ca. And uh, we will reach out to them and see if we can convince them uh, to come on and join us. But thank you so much, Michelle. Take care. You're welcome. Zen says goodbye. Bye, Zen. <laughs>